Welcome to Living High, Wild, and Free. My name is Tyler Bryan, and I'm a wildlife biologist based here in Saskatchewan. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the effects of drought on waterfall production in the Prairie Pothole region. Long story short, it's not good. It's dry, real dry here in Saskatchewan. The Canadian Prairie Pajo region is nicknamed the Duck Factory of North America. It contains about 10% of overall across North America nesting habitat for waterfall, but it produces upwards of 70% of all waterfall in North America. So it's critical that when birds show up here in the spring that they have available habitat for them to nest and produce young uh, so that it, it helps sustain or increase overall waterfall population levels across North America. So it's not just affecting here in Saskatchewan, but affecting birds that end up in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and all the states in between. And so it's absolutely critical that when birds show up here, they have resources readily available for them to use because they've traveled so far, hundreds and hundreds of miles, burned excess fat critical energy levels to show up and to produce young and when they do that they need food available readily so that they can refuel start a nest and start producing young so across the prairies it's dry wetlands are shrinking or disappearing entirely like the wetland we see behind me just a few years ago this wetland was full all the way to where i was standing there was still water and now it's completely dry and that's very common across the prairies this year even massive big wetlands are drying up and so what does that mean for waterfall well it's a reduction of habitat the way that i like to picture it is almost like the prairies breathe and in wet years we have this large expanse of habitat uh, we have abundance of uh, life across the prairies it's booming it's busting it's just it's overflowing everywhere and in the drought it shrinks like we exhale and so what that's doing is reducing uh, the amount of available space where waterfall and the reason i'm using waterfall as a subject here is because of their dependency on water it's been well noted that waterfall are highly dependent on available water to produce young and to refuel for migration so if we have a reduction of habitat, reduction of space that waterfall can uh, refuel after a long migration from, you know, even downwards into Mexico, uh, and also a space where they can produce young to replenish uh, those that were lost either through hunting or just uh, environmental reasons of old age, of, of uh, predation, of da 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 so many other different factors. And so, what that does is that reduces the amount of waterfall that are, are, are present across North America. So what do ducks do when this critical habitat that they rely so heavily on is disappearing across the prairies? Well, they adjust where they go and they also try to uh, produce broods in these high competitive areas. So it's very often that they actually will fly into the boreal areas of Canada and all the way up into the high Arctic. Birds are flying farther, they're burning more energy to get there and uh, nesting in areas that may not be common to them. And so they're choosing wetlands that potentially have less likelihood of being able to sustain themselves and their broods throughout the, the rearing season. And then you add on top of there's forest fires all over northern Canada. Anywhere there's trees, there's forest fires. And if you can see the haze behind me, that is a result of all the smoke that's being produced by all the forest fires. Now, some research has been done on how forest fires affect waterfall production. It seems like 
once the broods have hatched and they're able to be on the water, it has little effect on them. That they're able to survive and get the nutrients and everything that they need uh, solely from the wetland and the wetland does not get affected by the, the fire itself. However, if the bird is still nesting, meaning that the eggs are on shore, the eggs are lost. And so what we're finding in wetlands that are wet, that actually contain water and suitable amounts of water, meaning uh, that it will stay wet throughout the entire rearing season, uh, is increased competition. And so at each one of these wetlands, there's more birds, less food available, and an increased level of predation at each wetland. So we're increasing stress again for waterfall that uh, they're having a harder time producing, also decreasing the likelihood that broods are going to make it from the duckling stage, little poof balls, all the way up to a fledge stage, which means that they're able to fly and migrate and move out before the winter. And something that's not as well known is that not all wetlands are created equal. Each wetland is unique. It's almost like a snowflake or fingerprint. They may be similar in very broad characteristics, but in detail, each wetland is very different and contains different combinations of organisms, of water chemistry, of uh, surrounding habitat, of depth. Each one of those influences how suitable it is. And so what we're finding is that uh, the only wetlands that are left are really big or deep wetlands. And both of those are actually bad for waterfall production. The best wetlands are low-lying, smaller, small-ish wetlands tend to have more uh, food available that have a uh, better likelihood of nesting success because uh, it's harder for, uh, say, a predator to uh, focus on each single wetland because there's more of them. And there tends to be a higher abundance across the prairies of those kinds of wetlands. And those wetlands are all dry now, like the one behind me. So we have a reduction of what we'd call really good wetlands, like wetlands that are, are in high productivity. Um, we're left with big, massive wetlands. Uh, when we have deep wetlands, it's hard for a duck to go down and feed. And so it needs a certain depth of water and it also needs a certain chemistry in the water. And so here in the prairies, as the water shrinks, as there's less water available, it's also increasing salinity. And so salinity is a huge factor in uh, what we call good habitat for waterfalls. Some waterfall can handle more salty water and others prefer more of a fresh water. So let's recap. A, we have an increase in competition of individuals that's decreasing the likelihood of success. B, we have higher predation rates. C, we have less food available. And D, we have wetlands that aren't as suitable as others left to produce waterfall this year. So in the grand scheme of things, what does it really mean? Well, it's just a natural cycle. That what we're seeing here across the prairies and across North America, we go through these drought periods and there's really nothing that we can do about it. Try to be mindful that these birds and wildlife are being stressed at this point and that they need as much space and as much freedom as possible to collect as many resources as they can to make it through the migration, through winter for mammals, and uh, to produce offspring so that later generations can thrive. Now, in the grand scheme of things, when things go back to being wet, we should see an increase in waterfall production along with other critters. So just be mindful of that in these next, this year, maybe next couple of years as we go through a drought phase. And as always, keep living hot, wild, and free.